at the end of this video, you should be able to describe the shape of the moon's orbit around Earth and explain why eclipses occur. Chapter 28, Section 2, Movements of the Moon If you look down on the moon from above its north pole, you would see the moon rotate once on its axis every 27.3 days. However, if you stood on the moon's surface and measured the lunar day by the amount of time between sunrises, you would find that a lunar day is 29.5 Earth days long. This discrepancy is due to the fact that while the moon is revolving around Earth, Earth and the moon are also revolving around the sun. The Earth-Moon System To observers on Earth, the moon appears to orbit Earth. However, if you could observe Earth and the moon from space, you would see that Earth and the moon revolve around each other. Together, they form a single system that orbits the sun. The mass of the moon is only 1 80th that of Earth. So, the balance point of the Earth-Moon system is not halfway between the centers of the two bodies. The balance point is located within Earth's interior because Earth's mass is greater than the Moon's mass. This balance point is called the barycenter. The barycenter follows a smooth orbit around the Sun, as is shown on the screen here. The Moon's Elliptical Orbit The orbit of the Moon around Earth forms an ellipse that is about 5% more elongated than a circle is. Therefore, the distance between Earth and its Moon varies over a month's time. When the Moon is farthest from the Sun, the Moon is at apogee. When the Moon is closest to Earth, the Moon is at perigee. The average distance of the moon from Earth is 384,000 kilometers. Moonrise and Moonset The moon appears to rise and set at Earth's horizon because of Earth's rotation on its axis. If you were to watch the moon rise or set on successive nights, however, you would notice that it rises or sets approximately 50 minutes later each night. This happens because both Earth's rotation and the Moon's revolution. While Earth completes one rotation each day, the Moon also moves in its orbit around Earth. It takes an extra 1 29th of Earth's rotation, or 50 minutes, for the horizon to catch up to the Moon. Lunar Rotation In addition to orbiting Earth and revolving around the Sun, the Moon also spins on its axis. The moon rotated rapidly when it formed, but the pull of Earth's gravity has slowed the moon's rate of rotation. The moon now spins very slowly and completes a rotation only once during each orbit around Earth. The moon revolves only once around Earth, about 27.3 days relative to the stars, but the rotation and revolution of the moon takes the same amount of time. So, observers on Earth also see the same side of the Moon. Therefore, images of the far side of the Moon must be taken by spacecraft orbiting the Moon. As the Moon orbits Earth, the part of the Moon's surface that is illuminated by sunlight changes. The Sun's light always illuminates half of the Moon, and, as shown on the screen here, half of the Earth. The near side of the moon is sometimes fully illuminated by the sun. At other times, depending on where the moon is in its orbit, the near side is partly or completely darkened. Eclipses Bodies orbiting the sun, including Earth and its moon, cast long shadows into space. An eclipse occurs when one celestial body passes through the shadow of another. Shadows cast by Earth and the Moon have two parts. In the inner, cone-shaped part of the shadow, the umbra, sunlight is completely blocked. In the outer part of the shadow, the penumbra, sunlight is only partially blocked, as is shown on the screen here. Solar Eclipses When the Moon is directly between the Sun and part of Earth, 
the shadow of the moon falls on Earth and causes a solar eclipse. During a total solar eclipse, the sun's light is completely blocked by the moon. The umbra falls on the area of Earth that lies directly in line with the moon and the sun. Outside the umbra, but within the penumbra, people see a partial solar eclipse. The penumbra falls on the area that immediately surrounds the umbra. The umbra of the moon is too small to make a large shadow on Earth's surface. The part of the umbra that hits Earth during an eclipse, as is shown on the screen here, is never more than a few hundred kilometers across. So, a total eclipse of the sun covers only a small part of Earth and is seen only by people in particular parts of Earth along a narrow path. A total solar eclipse also never lasts more than about seven minutes at any one location. The last solar, to total solar eclipse visible in the United States was 2017. Even though there is a total solar eclipse somewhere on Earth about every 18 months. Effects of solar eclipses. During a total solar eclipse, people on the ground are in the moon's umbra. In the areas on Earth's surface under the umbra, the sky becomes as dark as it does at twilight. During this period of darkness, the sunlight that is not eclipsed by the moon shows the normally invisible outer layers of the sun's atmosphere. The last bits of normal sunlight before darkness often glisten like a diamond on a ring and cause what is known as the diamond ring effect. The diamond ring effect is shown on the screen here. Therefore, many people think that total solar eclipses are very beautiful. If the moon is at or near apogee when it comes directly between Earth and the sun, the moon's umbra does not reach Earth. If the umbra fails to reach Earth, a ring-shaped eclipse occurs. This type of eclipse is called an annular eclipse because annulus is the Latin word for ring. During an annular eclipse, the sun is never completely blocked out. Instead, a thin ring of sunlight is visible around the outer edge of the moon. The brightness of this thin ring of ordinary sunlight prevents observers from seeing the outer layers of the sun's atmosphere that are visible during a total solar eclipse. Lunar Eclipses A lunar eclipse occurs when Earth is positioned between the moon and the sun, and when Earth's shadow crosses the lighted half of the moon. For a total lunar eclipse to occur, the entire moon must pass through the Earth's umbra, as is shown on the screen here. When only part of the moon passes into Earth's umbra, a partial lunar eclipse occurs. The remainder of the moon passes through the Earth's penumbra. When the entire moon passes through Earth's penumbra, a penumbral eclipse occurs. During a penumbral eclipse, the moon darkens so little that the eclipse is barely noticeable. A lunar eclipse may last for more than an hour. Even during a total lunar eclipse, sunlight is bent around Earth through our atmosphere. Mainly red light reaches the moon, so the totally eclipsed moon appears to have a reddish color, as is shown in the middle portion of this composite image. Frequency of Solar and Lunar Eclipses As many as seven eclipses may occur during a calendar year. Four may be lunar and three may be solar, or vice versa. However, total eclipses of the sun and moon occur infrequently. Solar and lunar eclipses do not occur every lunar orbit. This is because the orbit of the moon is not in the same plane as the orbit of Earth around the sun. The moon crosses a plane of Earth's orbit only twice in each revolution around Earth. A solar eclipse will occur only if this crossing occurs when the moon is between Earth and the sun. If this crossing occurs when Earth is between the moon and the sun, a lunar eclipse will occur. Lunar eclipses are visible everywhere on the dark side of Earth. A total solar eclipse, however, can be seen only by observers in a small path of the moon's shadow as it moves across Earth's lighted surface. 
a partial solar eclipse can be seen for thousands of kilometers on either side of the path of the umbra. At this point, you should be able to describe the shape of the moon's orbit around Earth and explain why eclipses occur.